everyone, Nicholson here, and welcome to Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. I'm your host, and on this show, normally every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we'll be going over all of the day's movie news, as well as going over what it means for the production in general, such as casting decisions, trailer announcements, director announcements, things like that. Now, uh, I had to cancel yesterday's episode because of my work schedule, but I've made it up with an episode on Tuesday, and also another one today. I will have my regular scheduled program on tomorrow as well. So, without any further ado, let's get started with today's Hot Topics. Before I get into the story, I just wanted to clarify a fact that this is still indeed a rumor. There is no substantial information regarding this as of yet, but it's always still fun to speculate. It's always fun to talk about the what ifs, the possibilities. And so we know that Disney is very adamant on continuing on the franchise of the Indiana Jones series. Whether that is still with Harrison Ford or with a new actor is still up for debate, but I'm pretty sure that we have already cemented the fact we're no longer going to be seeing Harrison Ford don the fedora. So we have to understand this. And, and there are projects that are out there that I even have to sit there and I have to remind myself that, listen, this is happening. As a movie fan, it does not make sense for us to immediately assume that a movie is going to be bad. There are certain... Uh, there are certain points that will come out or certain plot details that will come out that will then start to allow us to create our own idea of what we feel that it will be. So with that in mind, and, I, and I'm mostly just talking about myself, trying to convince myself about the Ghostbusters remake, which will be uh, another story later on today. But with Indiana Jones, a lot of people out there saying, no, we don't, we don't want one, we don't need one, or anything of that sort, unless it's uh, Harrison Ford, we don't want one. And even then, it's even still kind of skeptical as to whether or not we do want one. But we have to come to the realization that this is something that is going to happen. They are moving ahead with a new Indiana Jones film. So we have to hope that we can at least get the best version of a new Indiana Jones film that we can get. And the rumor suggests that Chris Pratt is going to be our new Indiana Jones. And I got to tell you, that is a great decision. And the reason that I think it's a great decision is because the character of Indiana Jones, they're going to be doing more so of a James Bond type approach to this. They're not going to be rebooting it. It is just going to be a new story with Indiana Jones set in probably the late 20s, early 30s, uh, maybe even in the mid 30s. Uh, it all depends on what timeline they would like to go with, but it allows them to get back to that point, which is what we all like Indiana Jones in. We like him fighting the Nazis, you know? We like him, you know, hunting around in Africa and, and, or in, the, in Egypt, in the Sahara, and, you know, stuff like that. Areas where, um, where society had not touched them yet. And even now to this day, there's a lot of areas that are still like that. But we want to see the classical Indiana Jones story. Um, one of my main factors about this, so it, dealing with Chris Pratt, one of the reasons I think that he'll work is he has the charisma, he has the charm, and he has the look. So those are the main three physical aspects of the character. He has the look, he has the charm, he has the charisma. We need somebody who's got a lot of swagger to be in the role of Indiana Jones. We need that. That's just inherently part of the character. So looking at these traits and looking at the comedic sensibilities while also looking at the action lead role characteristics of Indiana Jones and fitting that in with Chris Pratt... They meet, they, they work hand in hand. Chris Pratt, and um, I forget what I was watching, if it was Schmoe's No or if it was something else, um, where they talked about how Guardians of the Galaxy was like his, was Chris Pratt's version of Star Wars. It was his version of Han Solo. So it would be even more fitting that he would become the new Indiana Jones because it would be, you know, one story to the next. And, and it makes sense. You know, I mean, it really does. He really was a, swash, uh, a swashbuckler in Guardians of the Galaxy. He really brought that across. And so him coming on board the Indiana Jones franchise, I think, could really do uh, the film some good. The one reason why I think this film could actually work as well George Lucas will have nothing to do with it. For those of you who don't know, Indiana Jones 4 was a movie that had a very troubled time getting to the screen. There were a lot of different drafts done. Um, Frank Darabont actually came in and wrote a draft. Jeff Nathanson came in and wrote a draft. Um, and generally speaking, most of those drafts were approved by both Spielberg and Harrison Ford, but it was George Lucas who turned them down. Most of the time, the George Lucas approved scripts were turned down by either Spielberg or Ford. So it was all three of them had to agree on the script in order for the movie to actually move along. And I think that George Lucas had just, he'd either convinced Spielberg to just go ahead and do it. 
Um, or Spielberg just didn't really care at that point because there were a lot of problems with with Crystal Skull, but. You, you know, I mean, like, it was the overuse of CGI, and they, they didn't need as much as they did. They could have done a lot of that stuff practical, but they just decided not to. The action scenes looked lazy. They looked slow and kind of boring. Um, there were just a lot of problems with it. And that was mostly due to Steven Spielberg. Now, the interdimensional being, Steven Spielberg has come out and stated that that was his idea. Whether or not I believe that is another story. Um, I know that he's both... The both of them have been fascinated with aliens. You can just look at Steven Spielberg's filmography to know that. Um, he even hand-fisted them into the ending of AI. But what I think that this means is we're going to get something that we were unable to get over the past 20, 25 years. I mean, granted, George Lucas had an amazing imagination. Well, it still has an amazing, amazing imagination, but his way of being able to bring about a story, a fantastical story that nobody had ever really seen before or something that people were slightly familiar with and bringing an entirely new approach to it really worked for him in the 70s and the 80s. But when he started to get into the 90s, when digital technology came out and that was what he had always strived for, um, he really started to just let his imagination just run wild and not really care about whether or not anything made sense, whether or not it looked right. He just wanted something wacky and cool to look at, at least in his mind. Now, looking back on what they did wrong with those movies are things that I think that they could avoid now. I mean, the, the movie landscape has changed. Even since Crystal Skull has came out, the movie landscape has changed. So I really think that there is... There is definitely something to look forward to with this. I think Pratt definitely is one of the right choices to go with. It would either be, in my personal opinion right now, it would either be him or Bradley Cooper who would get the role. And I personally would rather have Pratt because I want to see Bradley Cooper play Nathan Drake in the Uncharted movie. I think that's a great match. Um, if Nathan Fillion would lose some weight, I think he's absolutely perfect because I'm pretty sure that they modeled the character after Nathan Fillion. I mean, Nathan Drake looks just like him, but... I want Bradley Cooper to play that, so I don't want him to be really in the running for Indiana Jones. Although, if they did come out and say, no, actually, Bradley Cooper's cast is Indiana Jones, I'd be perfectly fine with that. Because out of all the actors in Hollywood right now, at least that I can think of off the top of my head, those are the two that are the most fitting. And I don't care when people say it's the most safe or it's the most conventional. It's, it doesn't matter. If they're the right choice, they're the right choice. It doesn't matter if they're the safe choice. That just means that you got the right person. Maybe you need to go outside the box to get somebody that would bring something really unique to it which would be interesting, but that's a 50-50 chance as to whether or not your whole film could fail because the whole film will rely on this character, will rely on the portrayal of this character. And if they do anything to, you know, damage that or to, um, you know, to take away from that and have the focus maybe stream onto the actual storyline as opposed to Indiana Jones, then it could fail. But the way that they're going, again, this is just a rumor. This is all just speculation. But... I do like the fact that they're going after Chris Pratt. I think he's the right choice. We're going to get a better sense of whether or not he's a, he's an even better choice uh, when Jer Jurassic World opens up in June. Because it, it's going to give us a slightly different character that Chris Pratt can portray than we've seen before. So I'm interested in it. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Do you think it's the right choice? Um, who would you rather see in the role? Anything like that. Put it in the comments. Uh, right now, there are no release date or filming schedules set up yet. Again, this is all just rumor. Um, but this is around the time that you or that Disney said that we might be expecting to see one because when they bought the rights back in 2013 they said uh, don't expect to film for at least you know two to three years and this is right around that time this is two years later so I mean we're in that time frame if they are planning on keeping to that which means momentum should start to pick up soon if this ends up being true and if it does I will definitely update you guys on here Ahead of what was originally planned to be a Super Bowl TV spot for the film, Universal Pictures has gone ahead and released their first official trailer for Ted 2. Now, up until this point, we really haven't known a whole lot about this movie. The only things that we did know was that Morgan Freeman was going to be playing a civil rights lawyer. Amanda Seyfried was going to be replacing Mila Kunis as the love interest in this movie, although we didn't know in what capacity. Um, and that at some point in the film, um, they will be making their way to Comic-Con, whatever that entails throughout the film. But the one thing I had no idea about was what the overall story of the film was going to be. And it looks as though they're, they're actually putting in a little bit of a storyline. Because the first movie, if you think about it, it really was more of the novelty of this bear that came to life and then ended up growing old and became a stoner and became, you know, kind of a, uh, a slapstick joke. 
Um, and he was living with his best friend and his girlfriend. And that was really, the whole storyline was about him moving out and getting on his own. Well, this one here is, okay, so Ted and his girlfriend, I can't remember her name. It's, uh, oh, Terry Lynn, I think. It was the, the, the whole sequence in the first movie. Um, I forget her exact name, but you, you guys will correct me in the comment section. But they plan on or they plan on getting married. They plan on having a kid, and so the film starts off with their wedding, and you get Sam Jones in there as the minister, which I thought was a really great nod to the first film. They're still keeping in touch, which is really cool. Um, and then you find out that in order for them to actually have a baby, because they plan on having a baby, and they want to use John Mark Wahlberg's character as a sperm donor, that uh, Ted needs to prove that he is a uh, a person that not like I don't know if it was exactly a human but he needs to prove that he has a soul that he's a person and so the whole movie is about them fighting for his civil rights and getting him some civil rights and so I thought it was a really cool approach on that um you know it's it's in the same vein as the original film I mean you get to see that a lot of the comedic uh parts of the trailer are going to be sight gags they're going to be Parts that really don't have anything to do with the film. Because if you watch the first movie, like, you know, the scene with the prostitutes and the crap on the floor and, um, you know, the, the Thunder Buddies part, that, like, none of that really had anything. Well, Thunder Buddies had a lot more to do with it. But um, when they're thinking about their first dates and then they have that remake, uh, the uh, remake of the scene from Airplane, which I thought was really funny. Um, but a lot of the sequences look like they're going to be similar to that. You have that weird car chase that I don't know what that has to do with the movie, so I'm interested to see about that. Um, you got Morgan Freeman that pops in there. I thought it was funny, the scene with Ted and the judge. I thought that played off really funny. It just looks like it's going to be a good time at the movies. And then you get kind of a, uh, a recap of the type of humor from the first film where they were just... Uh, he's like, okay, I'm gonna bounce off, or I'm gonna fire off a bunch of names, and then you stop me when I'm right, and then he just goes boom, 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 just fires all of them off, and it looks like they're doing something similar with the lawyer jargon at the end of the trailer. So that was funny, like objection, sustained, sidebar. <laughs> you know, it's just it made me laugh, and that's the whole point of the trailer. That's what the whole point of the movie is. So I'm definitely on board with this. I think it's gonna be really funny. I think that Seth MacFarlane has definitely made the right decision to not cast him in a live-action uh, role in this film. More importantly, I'm interested to know who Liam Neeson is going to be playing in this film. Now, I haven't checked online to see if they've revealed who that character is, and personally speaking, I don't really want to know yet. I want to, I want that to be kind of a surprise in the film. It would, to me, it would be really funny if he played the same character from A Million Ways to Die in the West and ended up being a time traveler, because I don't know if you guys are aware, but the original theories of A Million Ways to Die in the West, when we first saw the trailer, was that Seth MacFarlane's character was some sort of time traveler because he both acted and talked like you would in modern day and that and then you had that little cameo from doc brown in there so i mean there were little elements of it that made sense it would be really cool if they brought him in it'd be stupid as all hell but i think it would just be kind of funny it would be kind of like an out of left field laugh moment i, I just think it would be really funny um but i'm interested to see who everybody's going to be playing i want to i hope that sam jones has a but the same size of a role in this film as he did in the first one because he's you know he's really funny he's flash gordon everybody loves him um the, yeah i i have a feeling this movie's gonna be really funny it opens up on june 26th if you guys like the trailer as much as i did put a comment in the comment section let me know how much you liked it if you didn't like it what were some of the parts that you thought were kind of tired or um that you just didn't find were funny anything of that sort put a comment in the comment section and the movie opens up on june 26th when we do get more information about this i will definitely update you guys on here And here we are, the Ghostbusters reboot. Now, for those of you who watch the show, you've heard me go on ad nauseum about my feelings about this film. More importantly, it's, not, it's more so about director Paul Feig, is where my issue really lies. Um, and you've heard me go on about it before, so I'm not going to retread over that again. I'm just going to cover what the new news is. And I will start off with saying this. I am becoming slightly more interested in this film. This casting announcement has kind of piqued my interest a little bit. And it's, it's not because of the obvious ones. So I'll, I'll, it, you guys have already read the news, but just to give you an update. So the official cast, uh, or at least the Ghostbusters cast themselves, have been fully announced by both director Paul Feig and uh, Sony Pictures. So we have Kristen Wiig, Melissa McCarthy, Leslie Jones, and Kate McKinnon will be our new team of Ghostbusters. And... Well, it was almost a given that both Kristen Wiig and Melissa McCarthy would be in there. 
I am over the moon about Leslie Jones and Kate McKinnon. These two on Saturday Night Live are absolutely hysterical. Hysterical. Their comedic timing, their camaraderie with everybody, their ability to, their, their, sorry, their chemistry with everybody, their ability to interact with people and just boom, just nail every single comedic timing point they need to. That has me really excited for it. The one thing, I hope they don't focus too much on Kristen Wiig and Melissa McCarthy. I think that Melissa McCarthy is going to end up being the Bill Murray type character in the movie. She's going to be the jokey one. You know, They said that they're not doing adaptations or, or female versions of Egon and, uh, and everybody else from the original films. But Kristen Wiig, to me, is going to be more so like, oh, well, mm, okay. Leslie Jones and Melissa McCarthy, I think, are going to play a combination of the Peter Bankman rule. Um, Kristen Wiig is definitely playing the Dan Aykroyd role. Um, Kate McKinnon, I can see her playing the role of Egon, because uh, she well, she's going to be playing the assistant. So they're almost all taking little threads. Excuse me, they're all taking little threads and little points from each of the characters, and giving them to everybody, um, which I think is one of the right ways to go about it. Now, this is a supposed plot analysis of the movie, so I'm just going to go ahead with this. I don't believe this has been confirmed by Sony Pictures, but if it has, great. Um, because it does sound like it is the right way to go about this. So here we go. Aaron Gabler, played by Wig, and Abby Bergman, played by Jones, are the, two, are the first two leads as the film begins. They are former colleagues. They co-wrote a book about paranormal, uh, the paranormal together, then went in different directions. Aaron works, at, works for Columbia, and she gets close... Uh, Sorry, and she's getting close to tenure, while Abby is more involved in the pursuit of ghosts with a new partner named Jillian, played by McKinnon. In a world where, they are th uh, where there are 30 different Ghost Hunter-style TV shows out there, the setup makes sense, and it sets up tension between serious academic motives and mainstream pop parapsychology. Melissa McCarthy will play Patty, a New York City subway worker who stumbles across the main supernatural threat in the film. So it looks as though Melissa McCarthy will be the odd one out. She'll be the one who is not necessarily aware of this type of environment. Um, I think that also le uh, allows her to play the more obnoxious character than we've seen her be, which... Again, I, when I said about my breakdown of the trailer for Spy, I thought that they actually handled that really well because they allowed her to still be a little bit crazy and a little bit wacky, um, but she was still inherently a grounded character. She was kind of shy and she was kind of back in the corner, but she really wanted to do something uh, for her country. And so they, they found a balance to it. And I felt that that really worked. And if Paul Feig, who directed Spy, um, if, if he can find that kind of balance point to this, it, it might work. I mean, at the end of the day, we're, we just have to announce that. I, I talked about this in the first story. We have to understand that sometimes studios are just going to move ahead with a new film. Whether or not we feel that we want one or even need one is beyond our control. They are just going to go ahead with it, and we just need to hope that they are going to do or make the best version of that film that they can. And while, again, I still have issues with Paul Feig saying that, no, they were always just all, all going to be women. That's all I want to work with then I've had issue with that, but molding it around getting the best female comedians that there are out there right now, which they he definitely did a good job with that, um, then I think this has a, a little bit of a means of working. I, I, I'm getting a little bit on board with this, and I never thought that I would say that. Um, one of the interesting things about this, Sony apparently wants Bill Murray to have, play a role of Martin Heiss, or Hees, or Hess. I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce that name. Um, he would be a professional supernatural debunker who is out to prove the Ghostbusters are frauds. So this would be very similar to the William Atherton character in the first movie, where he was from, I think, the EPA, um, and he was trying to shut them down. I think that would be kind of the same role that they're going for with Bill Murray. It, you know, it would be kind of nice, but I think, to me personally, if they're doing a full reboot, I don't want the originals in there, even in a cameo. Um... You know, unless the the most I would want is if they're walking by uh, something and there's a row of TVs. And on the TVs, you see either Dan Aykroyd or Bill Murray or Ernie Hudson on there. You know, I think that would be about the extent that I would want to see the original characters. Because if they're trying to get a reboot, if this is trying to be rebooted entirely and be completely separate from the original, I don't necessarily want any of the original cast in there. So that's just my personal opinion on it. But... 
one of the biggest question marks that I have about this film now that we have the cast, we have kind of an idea of the story. Will Paul Feig restrain himself or will this be rated R? Because if not, this will be Paul Feig's first R-rated com- or non-R-rated comedy because he did Bridesmaids, which his brand of humor does work well with not being constrained to a PG-13 rating. He is a little bit more on the raunchy side. Um, he likes, um, I mean, Melissa McCarthy, with her playing a New York City subway worker, you can already bet that she's going to be a foul-mouthed character. So if they restrain it with PG-13, then she's going to seem like a very fake individual because she's going to be this kind of larger than life you know angry type character this is just my assumption by the way there's gonna be like a larger than life angry angry individual but is not able to swear then that's gonna throw i think a lot of people off especially knowing melissa mccarthy and what she's capable of and her brand of humor in her film so that's my biggest question mark right now is whether or not they're going for an r-rated r or if they're going to do more of a pg-13 um, I personally think they need to come up with a new rating because here in Canada, we don't have PG-13. We have uh, 14A and 18A. Um, both of those mean that like rate, Canadian rating R is like NC-17 in the States. Canadian rating R means that nobody under the age of 18 can go in and see a film. 18A is like the American version of R because it means that anybody under the age of 18 needs to be accompanied by somebody over the age of 18. And then 14A is the same type of thing, but it's not PG-13, it's technically PG-14. Um, and I think they need to come up with a new rating. I think they need to do what the UK does and do fi- uh, it's 15 plus or something like that, um, where they have, it's not PG-13, it's 15. Because that's that's a right age. You know, I mean, anybody who's over the age of 15 um, or under the age of 15 would be a, would be able to go and see the movie no problem. Um, I think that that just would really work. But this movie needs to be constrained or needs to be allowed to function on its own, and I think it deserves an R rating. But it's all going to depend on the market that they're going to try to go after. I don't think there's a lot of kids nowadays that are clamoring for a Ghostbusters movie. I think there's a lot of people that are my age and older that are going to be wanting a Ghostbusters movie. And we're all people who are not going to care whether or not it's PG-13 or R in terms of being able to get into the film. We're going to want to see a movie that's not having to constrain itself to be able to to live up to its creative function to its fullest extent. So I hope that they do that. I hope they don't constrain themselves, but if they end up doing that, then, well, there's nothing we can do to stop it. We just hope that they can make the best product that they can. While I'm still reserved on Paul Feig's decision, I am starting to get on board with this, and I never thought I would say that, but there it is. It's out there. They are looking at, it looks like they're going in the right direction. From from everything that I'm getting from here, they're going in the right direction. So consider me... You've converted me. You've turned me. And I'm now starting to get on board with this film. A little bit. A little bit. I'm not saying that I'm definitely excited for it. I'm not, it's not penciled in in my schedule that I'm definitely going to be seeing it yet. I'm going to wait to see some footage to see what type of a film we're getting because he said that he wants to do scary horror. And if he can pull off scary, or, or sorry, scary comedy, if he can pull off scary comedy and not just kind of comedy with cool special effects, but scary comedy then I'm more intrigued. Like there, there's been a couple of things about this project that's really got me excited. So, um, but I'm still hesitant about it. I'm, there's still so many things that could go wrong with this, but you know, only time will tell. The movie is scheduled to open on July 22nd, 2016, which right now, July 2016 is a hell of a month for movies. If anybody out there, just Google search uh, movie release dates, July 2016, and just check out the films that are coming out there. It's insane. It's insane. So, yeah, the movie's going to be opening up July 22nd, 2016. If we do get more information about this topic, I will definitely update you guys on here. Well, that'll about do it for us here on Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have been a great audience. Go ahead and click the subscribe button there in the bottom corner. You can get updates whenever we post a new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at Nicholson, N-I-K-L-S-U-N, for all of your movie updates. And also give us a like on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash movie news with Nicholson. If you guys ever have a topic or a question you'd like to have talked about on this show, you can go ahead and email us at movienewswithnicholson at gmail.com. And on every Friday episode, we'll try to get to as many as we can. But until next time, you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.